So I've been working on a duo trio version of my Hexa Half Cap for a little while now, and after stress testing its solo on both Rustified Odd and Rustopia Main, I'm extremely happy with it. Now while this bass could fully support a trio, it is optimized for a duo, so keep that in mind. Anyways, uh, let's get this started. To begin, we enter our TC through a sheet door airlock, then passing some glass, we arrive at our two 8 rocket external campfires. Heading inside through yet another single door, we reach our first entrance, where we're greeted by some glass to check for door campers, and a box for quickly depoting. Moving up the chute, we reach some secured drop boxes, and above that we find much more utility, which I'll touch on later. Continuing, we have a turret to the left, with some extremely good angles around lower peaks. Next, going over some dump boxes, we find an oil refinery, as well as a mirrored version of our previous entrance with the same external TC design. This triangle here is protected by two triangle roofs to avoid soft siding into your peaks. Passing by another turret, with similar angles to that of the previous one, we have a vending machine behind some glass, which is great for selling your extra supplies. Going into core, we have a more secure depot room on the left, and continuing over some boxes are our bags, tier 2, 4 box main loot room, and our TC, which has almost a week of upkeep on it. It's also useful to note that TC can be accessed from above as well, which is great for QOL as a duo or even a trio. Using a furnace jump up, we move to our second floor living area. This space has two loot rooms, one here and the other one on the opposite side here. We also have our electrical behind some window glass, as well as our tier 3, bags, and a turret. On our bedroom floor, we have one with a lot of storage here, however no locker, and another with minimal storage, however it has a locker poking through. Moving into peaks, you can see some of the angles that come with this base, all of which have some really great sight lines. It's also important to note that all peaks are no fall, meaning raiders cannot ladder up. Heading to one of our chutes, we reach our first bit of utility, which is a bedroom and locker, neither of which poke through the garage door, which prevents splash or a raider breaking your bed through the door. In our shooting floor, we've got some mixing tables for breaking bad reenactment, as well as two turrets and two auxiliary bedrooms. Continuing to our shooting floor, we've got some standard embrasure windows, as well as some raised windows, which are great for taking heli. We've also got some door peaks, complete with siren lights to prevent people squeezing in. Door peaks are great, as they provide simple angles to peek down at door campers. Heading through the double door above our chute again, we find our roof peaks. I also like to place a campfire here with a pan, as it makes you incredibly durable. These peaks are great, as with the help of turrets, you can easily deter scrap helis and top downing on your base. As you can see, the only part of me that can be seen is my head, and with the 75% damage resistance that comes from a pan, you're practically unkillable. These peaks also give you a great angle to retake your shooting floor, especially if you place a bag in here with a kit. Now, at our roof jump up, we've got an embrasure to view the double doors, which is useful for any top-down door raids or even door campers. 
On the roof itself, we've got two turrets, both protected to force anyone trying to destroy the turret to enter its field of view. We also have some triangle roofs, which are useful for both peeking down and being a scumfuck roof camper. On the same window that is used for heli, we've got an extremely useful peek down. This peek down works as a head glitch, giving you very solid angles, meanwhile an attacker can see nothing but your torso. Now that all that tour stuff is out of the way, let's get to the base build. To begin, we're going to head to a flat spot and place a hexagon, followed by three wall frames. Then we're going to put a wall here and upgrade both the frame and wall to stone, making sure there's a conditional. Next, we surround the rest of the base with walls, as well as placing a divider wall. Then we stone everything up. From there, we fill all but one roof up, then stone all of those, and place the last roof here, upgrading it to wood. Finally, we place two double doors here, both opening towards this triangle. Then we're going to place our TC in this corner right like so, followed by a stoned window. For our deployables, we place a half wall here, then our two triangle shelf above it, upgrading to stone. After that, we place our first bag like so, and our second bag in the airlock. Next, we place our four box loot room, and on the top shelf, we are careful to make sure TC can still be accessed by that back left box. Then, we place our two furnaces in the corners, and our tier one in the space left over. From there, our deployables are finished. Continuing, we place four triangle foundations, then walls and a frame, followed by filling in the roofs, then placing two more frames, and upgrading everything to stone. Next, we place a door, then we make a loot room similar to the one we did before. Once all our boxes are down, we place some more double doors. Even with all these double doors, the base is still easy to move around in. Once you reach tier 2, there's going to be some reorganizing. Start by picking up many of your deployables, followed by picking up several of your double doors as well. Place tier 2 in this corner here, keeping the legs away from the intersection of the triangles, as otherwise you'll have to pick up the tier 2 to place your garage doors. Basically, just keep them away from those lines. Once your tier 2 is down, you're going to place a bunch of garage doors in all the frames, adding new frames where there aren't already. Next, we place two furnaces hugging this wall, as they'll be used as a jump out later. Next, we take our bags, and we put them both in these two triangles here, getting all cozy. It's a little cute, you know. It's worth mentioning that while this campfire can be placed, it severely affects ease of access of the TC from above, so I tend to forgo it. To expand upwards, melee out this wooden triangle with a machete, hatchet, or melee weapon of your choice, then surround the perimeter with walls. After that, we make our chute like so. And if you're having trouble placing this frame right here, you can place a temporary triangle here and place the frame, then delete the triangle. Then we fill all our floors in, and upgrade everything to stone, which I'll fast forward. Finally, we had two double doors in the roof just to seal everything up. 
To begin furnishing our second floor, we add a wall and frame, sectioning it apart. Next, we toss down three furnaces in this triangle, followed by a window directly in front. Then, we fill the entire space up with frames, and move on to adding our two triangle loot rooms. Once that's done, we make sure all the frames are occupied by garage doors. Once all the garage doors are down, we furnish the rest of our second floor with boxes. I'll be fast forwarding a lot of this. After that, we surround this floor with walls, sectioning it off like so, and then bringing everything to stone. After that, we place a half wall here, then we fill the roof up and stone it all. It's also extremely important not to place a frame here. This cannot be occupied. We instead place a frame here and seal it with a double door. Next, I'm going to do some upgrades. However, I'll speed these up. I'm also going to be placing a garage door here, however I'll be skipping the replacement of all the boxes. To make our build out, we place a low square off of the thin end of the build, then a raised triangle in the center. Then we make a pattern of six hexagons out. I'll be doing this a bit slower, as I know some people had trouble following my original hexahack gap tutorial. Once the hexagons are complete, we use our hammer to demolish everything all the way back. Then, we build back with 10 squares, adjusting for any terrain deviation on the way back to keep the foundations raised by half a height. Also, to quickly show the difference between a half gap buildout and a multi TC buildout, I've made this comparison out of twig. As you can see, the half gap build is only about one hexagon difference in length. Anyways, on the opposite side, I'll be using a different buildout, one that takes up less room. Since the standard buildout is six hexagons, you can divide that into three hexagon buildouts twice. Next, I'm going to build some external TCs. These are fairly simple, so I won't be commentating over most of this, but feel free to use whatever TC design you wish to use. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's also important that this doorway cannot be stone. If it was, then a raider could send four rockets here, splashing the floor, door, and wall. Because the two foundation corners don't connect, this allows the TC to be disconnected. To fix this, we make sure that the doorway is sheet metal, and that will solve our issue. After that, we do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm going to speed this up a bit though. Now we're going to start on our shell footprint. We place a triangle foundation on either side of this triangle, upgrading both to sheet. Then on the double door side, we place three triangles, sheet metal the last one, and destroy the other two. On the other side, we again place three triangles, upgrading the last to sheet, however we then place a square and three more triangles, upgrading two of the triangles to sheet, and the center to stone. We next destroy the two twig triangles and square. It's extremely important that the long side of the foundations is on the opposite side of the double door. From there, we mirror the footprint on the opposite side. Be very careful which side is the long side. On the right side here, we're going to place four triangles. However, unlike last time, we're going to upgrade these two triangles and delete the other two. This will be where we store our oil refinery. Then we place two triangle roofs here to cover the soft side of the oil refinery foundation. After that, we place a furnace between the foundations on both sides of peaks so that we can move throughout the shell. Now, I'm upgrading this frame to sheet. However, I forgot in the recording to upgrade the wall to the left of it to sheet as well. You should upgrade that to sheet, and then, if it makes a conditional, you rotate the frame. Now I'm going to do the first layer of walls for the peaks. These are all fairly simple, so I'll just let these play. However, it's important that this frame I'm placing here is sheet metal on both sides, and that's pretty much the only complicated part. Before we continue with the walls on our shell, we have to first do some of the peaks. Heading inside, we place a half wall here, then fill the inside with six triangles. The reason we do peaks before we do the walls is because while these two triangles place, the center one doesn't. However, if you place the triangles first, everything is fine. Now, there are some workarounds for this, namely, using a siren light. However, personally, I don't believe this to be an issue, as you can just place the triangles first, then the walls after. Even if the center triangle is destroyed, there's very few scenarios where the walls wouldn't be destroyed alongside it. Now, on the opposite side here, it's extremely important to place these triangles off the base, as if they're placed off the other triangles here, for example, this wall can't place, so it's basically pixel perfect. It needs to be placed off the base itself, and then the walls will place.
just to show again, it's only the turret double doors that are sheet, so above those turret double doors, not the entrance. Now our last floor of peaks are extremely simple. You're just surrounding the whole thing with walls and putting a frame above the entrances. Now again, it's the exact same things that are being sheet metal. The frames to allow you through the gap, and everything else is stone except for above the turret pods. Now, to seal the roof, you're going to cover the sides with triangles here, and upgrade them all to sheet metal, then do the exact same thing on the opposite side. For the squares, you're going to place a square in the place where there's two slots, so not on the multi-TC gap, on opposite sides. Then, on the multi-TC side, you're going to place a frame off the side with less slots, so one over there, upgrade that to stone, and the floor in there. And the floor will have more stability because it's placed on the side with more slots. Now on this side, you're going to place a floor off the side without the oil refinery, as the oil refinery's foundation missing means less stability on that side. So you're going to place your frame off the side with more stability, then put your floor back here. Since we have our shell sealed, we can start some peak downs. So you're basically just going to put two triangles in each corner. Now, since we need to remove these conditionals to allow us through, we're going to upgrade both of these to sheet, and then rotate one of them. That will remove the conditional. And also, don't worry about it being soft side, the peaks poking through the wall make it hard side, so it's not pickable. Now, on the opposite side, we're going to want to upgrade both of these to sheet, however, that will make it conditional. To remove the conditional, just rotate that half wall there. Now, I've decided to stop putting frames here, as even though it places, the problem is that this floor here will not replace in the event of a top-down raid. So I remove that frame usually, personally, just so I can still seal. However, if you were to have a frame there, you could remove the conditional with the frame rather than this half wall here. Either or is fine. See, as you can see here, if I rotate the half wall back, the conditional is gone. But, again, I don't like having a frame here. So I ro rotate the half wall. Next, I'm going to toss some garage doors, just so that the shell is at least three rockets right now. I'm also going to place a window, so it can actually be properly sealed. Next, I'm going to add some entrances, so that the base is a bit more tricky for anyone to go deep on. After that's all done, we're going to upgrade everything to stone. I'll speed this up though. So now we're going to start honeycombing. So this is all pretty simple as well. The one thing is that we have to remember where you're honeycombing. So it's important to honeycomb along this multi-TC crack. 
So not the sheet metal on our right with the turret pod, it's only the multi-TC gap right here, as you can see. Next, we're going to do some upgrades. So just sheet metal all these roofs here to help prevent splashing from top downs and that sort of thing. Don't let them get access to too much. Then we're going to add some low walls here, as if they do top down and you're in peaks, they'll have less sight lines on you. We're also going to put some low walls in the center here. These are really good for helping splash. They don't completely prevent it, but they help a lot. And so we're basically dividing the hallway, the chute, and our two bedrooms, as you can see here. For our first bedroom, we're going to take a barbecue and put it in the back corner here. Then we take a small box and toss it underneath. From there we take our bed and jam it into the back left as far as we can. Then we take another barbecue and from the right we sort of slide it in. It may not look like it looks like it works, like here. I was very uh, unsure as to whether this would be inside, but it's it's completely fine. The garage door really makes up the difference anyways. Then you put a small box under there and a small box on the peak downs. Then you take a large box and you're going to place it flush with this wall, making sure that that back left corner in the bottom left, sorry, will poke through the garage door so that if they were raiding, you would still have access to that box through the garage door. For the second bedroom, you're going to take three campfires and place each of them sort of in the corners. Then you get up on these peak downs, pull out your bed, and you sort of fall and it'll let you place. Then you take another small box, put it on the peaks, take a locker, and again, making sure it pokes through. So you see the crease on the left there, make sure it would poke through the garage door, and your bedroom's done. So to start our shooting floor, we're going to do our roof peaks first. Then moving on to the actual window floor itself, we can place our floors. And so once that little footprint part is done, we can start on our windows. Now I actually fucked this up in the recording, I'm sorry. I put a window where there's supposed to be a half wall right here, and that should have a half wall and a window on top of that, so I apologize for that. Now for these bedroom parts, I'm doing these with the assumption that a frame is there, so the frame that can't replace the floor above it um, that I showed earlier. 
but if you didn't have a frame like I don't here, you could actually do four rooms here instead of just the three. I'm just doing it with three in case people want to have a uh, frame there, but again, if you don't, you can have more rooms. Now don't put any window glass in this one here as that'll have an embrasure later. Now to furnish our chutes, we're going to start with some drop boxes. So just make some sheet metal floors here, then some half height floors where our boxes are going to go. And we put all four of our boxes here. I don't really do small boxes here because this isn't a place to actually be able to do room. It's just some quick dump boxes, so small boxes really aren't necessary. To start with our bedroom, we put a campfire in the crook here. Then we put a frame here and a garage door in said frame. Now this next part is a bit tricky. You need to get the locker leg hanging off just a bit so that it doesn't poke out of the garage door, but as far right as you can. So closing the garage door, we check that the locker isn't poking through. Then we can open it again, and we can take a bed and put it in as far as we can. And this placement is really tight. If you can't get this, don't worry about it. There's a, You can use the other uh, bed layout that I did in my bedrooms earlier. Now to make our roof peaks, we're basically just gonna spam triangle roofs around everywhere, and then we're basically done. Now from here I'm going to make the wind turbine platform, so in this corner here, because it has the most stability, I'm going to place five wall frames high, then I'm going to place my wind turbine platform. Uh, this gives you ten and a half floors of height, 
which is enough plus a solar panel with a wind turbine to power nine turrets easily. Now once the platform's down, we're gonna put the wind turbine up here. Then we put a large battery in where the furnaces are here. So we're gonna remove those and just place the battery in here. At this point, you should have a space in either your peaks or hopefully just some large furnaces down to uh, pick up the slack of those missing furnaces. Next I'm going to do some deployables around the base, so just put the tier 3 here, then put a bunch of armored glass around, so that'll just be the battery, the main TC here, and then the external TCs as well as these chutes. Now once you've got your electricity sorted, I'm just going to place 9 turrets down all around the base. They're just a bunch of good spots with solid sight lines. I also like to toss down two bags here, just so that you can have some second floor respawns, even if they're not beds. Now for some final upgrades on the base, we're going to bring this sheet wall to high qual. Now you'll immediately notice there's a conditional here that blocks you from getting through. So to fix this, we're going to rotate this wall to remove the conditional. Now, I know it is a soft side now, however, first of all, it's armored, so it's a bitch and a half to soft side. And second, a lot of people can't even tell the difference between an armored soft side and an armored hard side. They look so similar in comparison to stone soft sides or metal soft sides. Anyways, to continue, we're gonna upgrade some more stuff to armored. Then heading inside, we're gonna do some floors here. And these two walls at TC. Now this brings TC to 26 rockets, and the main loot itself to 22. From there, the base is complete. Now before I go, I want to quickly mention, I know there's some more deployables and that sort of thing left, but uh, they're all pretty simple, like the upstairs bedrooms, you know, you can just watch the tour again, and it's pretty simple, it's just a locker, a bed, and a square. Anyways. Uh, I want to thank you all so much for a thousand subscribers. I was planning on doing a community post, but YouTube is being a bitch and I don't have access to that yet because it's slow as fuck. Anyways, thank you all so much. It's insane. I know it's still a small number, but it's just it's crazy to me. So thank you all so much. I've got a bunch more stuff coming. Uh, I will see you all in the next one, I suppose. Thanks for watching. Bye.